How are we doing today, guys? Today we are going to show you how to make the L bracket in on shape. So the first thing we're going to do is just like always create a new document, and this one is going to be named L bracket activity. So we're going to go ahead and type that in. Press OK. Creates a new workspace. Make sure we change the work units to millimeters like we've been doing. Come up to the hamburger, can let it do its thing. Workspace units, drop this down to millimeters. Press OK. It's taking a little longer than normal. Let's refresh that. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to start a new sketch, use the front face, sorry, front plane, and then go to the front view of the view cube. And once we look at that, um, now they're asking us to create some lines. And this can be a little confusing, so I put these diagrams in to hopefully help you guys. Um, so the first, I just numbered these off. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And it just says continue sketching lines to make it look like this. There's no measurements on this yet. Um, it's just to give you um, basically a base plate. So we're in the sketch. I'm going to go to line. Always start from the origin. Draw a line. And you're going to see, and I just clicked once, you're going to see eventually um, that this program automatically kind of locks. You see that? How it kind of like locks perpendicular. So there's geometric constraints that are built into the software that allow you guys to uh, make your lives a little easier. So I'm going to click that perpendicular so you can see how it locks in. Um, and again, there's no real measurements here. It's just to make it look as um, close to the picture as possible. You can see these kind of start locking in. I press OK. And if it turns gray, that means you closed um, the, the profile. If it doesn't turn gray, that means one of these points are not connected somewhere. And usually it's this origin one. Um, but it turned gray in this case, so we're good to go. So we're going to continue. Um, select the perpendicular constraint. Select the two lines. So again, numbers. Um, I did perpendicular for this corner perpendicular for this corner and perpendicular for this corner. So I'm going to come up here. Um, it doesn't show it in mine because again, I'm in split screen, but yours is going to still show all the way at the top perpendicular. I'm going to make this line perpendicular to this, which is just basically a 90 degree angle. This perpendicular to this and perpendicular to this. And how do you know if you did any of this right? There's a little checkbox up here that says show constraints and it shows you what the constraints are. Um, so and what you've placed so far. The other one that it tells you to do um, is a horizontal constraint. So two and two, again, one, one, one are the perpendiculars, and two and two are just making these two lines parallel. So I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to go to parallel. I'm going to make this line parallel to this line, and that just means um, that they're basically going in the same direction. Um, so I can press um, perpendicular. It did it all three times. Horizontal, I did three times. It says hit the green check mark. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to delete that out of here so that you guys don't see that. Oops. Good. Um, select equal constraints. So if we really zoom in here, um, it's going to make two and two equal, and it's going to make three and three equal. And the reason we're trying to do that is so that we can um, put in one measurement, and it'll affect basically everything else um, that it's pertained to. So what I mean by that is if I go to here and I go to equal, that means that this line, no matter what I change it to, will be the same as this line. And you can see that little equal sign shows up and it's equal to that system. Same thing here, I want this line to be equal to this line so that if I change it to like 20, and you can see how it now thick, thickens the exact same um, depth or the exact same dimension. Um, so that should, should make it a little easier for you. Select the equal constraint, it says select the green check mark again. Um, I'm actually going to delete that as well. Sorry, these are all placeholders. Um, open previous sketch. So again, I'm not making you open it again. I'm just leaving it open. Um, so select the bottom line, um, and we're going to create a dimension now. So we're going to come up here, and dimension is right here. We're going to make this line. I'm going to click it once. I'm going to make it 500, and this thing is going to explode, I think, get big. Yeah, it gets huge because that was not what I originally planned, um, originally put it as. So um, now you can see, though, even though I did one dimension, it affected everything within this system. Now, this is now 500 because this was equal to it. This changed because I changed this. So this changes, um, and they were completely related to each other. So again, those constraints are really important. Um, create an angle sketch is the next step. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm already in dimension. So this one's kind of tricky. Um, basically, you select the angle, 
and then you select this bottom line and it, I just clicked I didn't move anything and as you can see if I move my mouse so that I can get it to this angle um, now I can type in 45 degrees and you can see this adjusted up now this move because this has to stay equal to this and so forth and so forth with these two at the end um, select an aligned dimension so these ones you don't have to say aligned it says align but you do not have to do that um, move just away from the line it says select the upper line so now we're just dimensioning um, these two and I believe they are 100 yep press enter and I don't have to do this one again over here because again um, they're equal so if I change this one it should automatically change that one it's kind of cool um, next one construction geometry so what they want to do here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and escape dimension. All I did was right click to get this um, escape dimension so that I can see all this. I'm going to hide these constraints because they are a little overwhelming. I'm also going to, as I always do, um, kind of make these planes invisible. And that just gives me a really clean looking um, drawing to not work with. So anyways, um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see this. So it says construction lines. So all you're gonna do is click one line and you don't have to hold shift or anything like that to select multiple lines in arm shape. You just directly select multiple lines and it'll, it'll identify that. I'm gonna select these two end lines. I'm gonna click right and you can see a little number pop up um, around my cursor. And now that means I selected two, two um, basically lines. And if you scroll down, you'll see um, construction right here. So if I hit construction, they kind of go dashed. And all that allows me to do um, is they're not actual object lines now. They're lines that we can work with. So we're going to allow that. We're going to show that and that they're, they're good. The next thing is just to create two circles from those. Um, so at the end, you're going to see, and I, I'm going to try and zoom in here so you guys can see this. Um, I don't think you can. If it's just a little dot, that's an endpoint. If you scroll up, um, when I draw a line, you'll see a square, and that's a midpoint, meaning it's just directly halfway between um, the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two circles at the end of these. So I'm going to go to the circle command, and again, I'm still on that same sketch. I haven't even gotten out of it yet. Um, and you can see it kind of locks in. And you can see that little symbol, and I know you, I can't point to the screen, um, but it does go in the middle and it locks in. And then I'm going to go over here, and again, it locks into that point. I'm not pressing anything and it automatically makes it um, tangent in this case. So I'm gonna come here, again the same thing, click, and now it's all gray again because with those dotted lines there was openings allowing it to escape to not create and close a profile. Where I created these circles, it now creates and holds that profile. So I got these two circles, and now I'm going to um, sketch the fillet. So I'm gonna go ahead and escape circle, right click, and then press escape circle. I'm now going to fillet sketch. So we did fillets before, um, but we filleted basically curved three-dimensional objects. There's two different types of fillets. The first fillet is in a sketch like we are right now. So I ro rotate this around. You're going to see that there is no dimension or third dimension to this. It's only two-dimensional. So I'm going to go back to the front view here just so I make it lined. It. Um, but inside of sketch mode, and you can see you're in sketch mode because of this toolbar, you're going to see up here that this is sketch fillet or fillet. Um, you go ahead and select the two lines that you want to fill it um, and again you're going to zoom in really close here um, and we're going to change the radius to I believe 100 and it's going to really show there we go 100 um, and the same thing down here again 100 is already locked so I can just press enter and now you can see I fill it at this corner and fill it at this corner so now that those curves are basically um, within that sketch scroll down a little bit now you're gonna extrude the profile 50 millimeters. So now it finally, I can press the green check mark and I am going to um, rotate this around just a little bit so you can see this action. So again, extrude, select, select both of the circles as well. And now we want this to be 50. So I type in 50 and now I have a 50 thick L bar and it says create another sketch. Um, so I'm gonna press green check mark I'm going to create a new sketch on this front face of this object. And again, that's just showing you that it's on that front face. If I scroll down, now it's going to ask me to make these random lines. Um, and this is where it kind of gets a little tricky. It's just touchy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the front view just so it's a flat view. Um, and I'm going to draw a few lines. So the first line I'm going to draw, and again, I'm not clicking anything. You can see that if I start with a point, Onshape is smart enough to kind of realize that I'm trying to go straight up and you can see it locks in that little square. Let me take off my pointer for a sec so you guys can see that. If I go up here, you'll see the point I drag. I'm not pressing anything and it locks into that square. So then I can draw that line um, randomly. There is no measurement. Again, it's just kind of random. I'm going to right click and escape line. 
I'm going to press line again and again do the same kind of thing over here and kind of let it fall and you can see it kind of locks into that center and I'm going to come all the way down here and again I just got lucky um, that those two are locked in. If they are not locked in, and I'm going to give you that um, scenario right here, let me do this um, and make this line like a little shorter. And I'm going to draw this line again, same concept, and I'm going to make it so that it is parallel and you can see it locks in there. Just got to play with it. There we go. So now you can see that these two are not, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and escape line and I'm going to drag, literally hold the dot and drag it until it hits and it, it will hit. Um, and then you can come back here and do the same to the other and you see how it locks in like that and now we are good to go. So now each one of these lines are, are locked. So if you overdo it, underdo it, whatever, you can mess with these points um, to make it work for, for whatever you need it to do. Um, the next piece is to make sure um, that we make those construction lines first. So these, I'm, again, I'm not clicking shift or anything like that, I'm just collecting those two um, and then I right click and say construction. And again, those are just lines that we can work with. They're not really used in the drawing itself for any features. They're just used to help us with guides. Um, so now we're gonna make these parallel. Uh, select parallel, select the lower line, the lower edge, the angled line, and the angled edge. Meaning that basically we're gonna come over here, we're gonna make this parallel to this, and this parallel to that. That's just making sure that they're angled correctly and we didn't um, you know, mess anything up. I'm gonna escape the parallel, parallel constraint come up and it says create three circles. So I'm going to come up here and again um, center circle, stay in that sketch. I'm going to come from this center, I'm going to make this um, 50, so I can type in 50, don't have to use the dimension tool if you don't want. Come from this circle, I'm going to make this one ran randomly any measurement I want and I'm going to press uh, escape circle, I'll go back to circle again, and I'm going to make this anything I want. I'm not going to put dimensions in there because I want you to see this cool little feature as well. If you come down here you can go to equal and I want this circle to be equal to this circle as well as this circle and you can see it jumped a little bit um, and now each one of these circles and it's going to do it again I got to do this one I want that one to equal so now these three circles you select the circle that is correct then you select the circle that is not correct so I changed this circle and then from there I escape that command and then I drag that circle and select the next circle I want to change I hope that makes sense um, so after that, it says select and add two more circles. So I'm going to add two more circles, and this is nice because now we have these, these lines that are perfectly, and you can see there's a midpoint right here, and I can make this any random amount. I can even make it ridiculously huge. Um, and you'll see that after I escape that circle and go to equal, I want this to equal this. And now let's just randomly select, okay, this one. I want that one to equal that, and you can see that now they have adjusted. Um, and you don't have to put any dimensions in at all. So it's pretty cool. Um, scroll down a little bit, and now the last step is to extrude those circles um, so that we can um, cut them through the part. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the X, uh, the green check mark. I'm gonna hit extrude. I'm gonna select, again, these are tricky. Um, sometimes you gotta just make sure that just the circle is selected, not the overall profile. So I'm gonna select each one of these and you'll get, you'll get good at it. Um, and again, if you make any errors, there's X's here that you can, you can delete. Now, obviously you can see here, it's going in the wrong direction. So we want it to go in the opposite direction. Um, so I'm gonna make sure I show you guys that. It's right here. Um, and we wanna make sure it goes the other way. Now, instead of using a blind, the easy way to do is just to through all. And that just means through the whole entire part. Um, and it's still under add here. So we wanna remove objects. We wanna remove the things that we're gonna do and basically cut um, that circle through. And as you can see now, um, those are holes and we are good to go. We can press the green check mark. Um, I can turn a couple of these sketches off. Um, they're actually all turned off. And there you go, you have your L bracket. Um, one thing I didn't say in the last video, we're gonna move that up into the top right corner um, and then we're gonna press you know, print screen or whatever you guys press um, and make sure that you guys take a screenshot again of your name and your part up in the top right corner and make sure you save and submit that. I hope this helps guys. If you have any other questions, please ask your teacher.